How's it going everybody? Random here. It's a new project on the bench. Tonight I have the Supra iBox BTLE Bluetooth. Uh, these are used by Realtors. There's actually a key inside this. Um, I bought this, I believe it sounds like there's a key on this. I bought this off the Kijiji for about, uh, which is like Canada's eBay, uh, for 10 bucks. So we'll see if uh, I can get it open. Now, even though I am proficient in the electronics, I am not a coder. I'm not going to sit here and try to hack this Bluetooth. It's not what I'm into. What I'm curious about, and I know that you can destroy this thing, like, you can destroy anything if you got enough time and enough tools. What I'm curious is, can I create a bypass for this? Because I have, like, I've jammed some pretty thin stuff up in there, and I was able to get it almost to the top. So I'm curious, just like the American Locks, is, uh, is it bypassable? And it might not be. Uh, there could be a motor actuating the cam, which is my guess that it is the just a, an offset cog that pulls in a couple bearings that allows it to open. So unless you can get in that area where those cogs are, it's probably not going to open. But uh, you never know. There's got to be two motors, one for the latch, one for the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the shop and I'm going to start by cutting this casing off, which is some type of thermal plastic rubber fun stuff. And I'm not going to cut the shackle yet, and then uh, we're going to see what we have to do to get it apart. Or at least to get inside, because I want to keep it as much as possible so I could reassemble it and uh, try, my, uh, try my hack on it. Uh, and I'm not going to show you cutting this apart, um, because I don't think anybody out there really needs to know how to, how these, what tools you need to get these open. Uh, but I'm sure most people can figure it out. So that part's uninteresting to me. We'll just uh, figure out if uh, what's inside here, how it works, and... Uh, if we can figure out a way to bypass these. Or is it just some amazing piece of engineering that uh, GE, well the Super put together and then I believe GE bought it out. But either way, uh, we'll be back. Hello everybody, it's Random here. So we are back with the Supra iBox uh, and I decided to cut it apart. First thing I did was uh, when I got the shop is I did try to shim it again. And uh, it just, it won't happen. In the position of when it's locked up and nobody's cut it apart. Uh, this piece right here sits fairly close to the top. There's actually another section in here with the board. We'll show you that in a minute. But when this sits up the top, you actually have to press this hasp down uh, and then you do your unlock with your Bluetooth and it'll send the signal. It'll pull a solenoid in and it'll allow you to pull this directly out. So I tried to shim it and I can actually get pretty far down in there but I could never really, actually let me just go like that, you have exposed here, I don't know if you can see that, I'll zoom in, sorry for the shaky camera, exposed here you have very little space, uh, there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch on either side. So if you didn't want to be destructive, you can't slide a shim in far enough, which you're right there, you can feel it, and close it because you need to get it all the way down. It actually hits on the rubber. So you would be deforming the rubber. If you were to cut this rubber out of the way, then, and there wasn't a doorknob in the way. I think a doorknob would play a, a completely different role here because it would take up so much of your visual space and plus you're locked right against a wall. If you were to cut this away, you could probably shim it, but you have to shim when this is pressed down completely. Uh, and I'll show you why. So once I realized I, I couldn't shim it, I pulled this plastic funky case off, which is just a weatherproof cover for um, the components inside. And plus the components inside are even weatherproofed on top of that, so no water's ever gonna get in here. So I did drill out those two rivets first, and then I tried to pull the entire centerpiece out. It still wouldn't move. Uh, and then I got this off by cutting around the outside with an angle grinder. Uh, carefully only going as far as I need without damaging any internal components. Uh, so then I got this open and I realized two things that this is never made to come apart because this, you can see it, that pin and that pin is actually punctured in later on after it's assembled and holds into that slot and that slot and then two rivets. So it's made to be assembled and that's it. She's junk afterwards. So once I got this, it still wouldn't slide out. I still couldn't get the box out. I still couldn't do anything. So I got looking in here 
and there is a electromagnetic uh, coil in here. So this coil is basically charged in the center. Uh, so they put uh, some voltage to it. It pulls in on the in uh, uh, these two plungers that are here, and the lights pull the hasp up. So if you just shim, you can't get in there. You do have to push that down all the way, and you can just take a, a broken pick because you know broken picks are good for something. Slide that in, and your hasp comes out. And this is part of the reason why your hasp gets locked. It has these, I'll zoom in for you, it has these little, almost like a, a clip on here. It's a piece of, piece of steel that has been either brazed or, I don't even think it's brazed. Either way, it's adhered to here somehow. So the, pull this out and I'll show you the other part of it. I can't show you the top, but I can show you the bottom. It's pretty much identical. I'm sorry, went out of camera on that one. So this right here, I don't know if you can see it. It's not just a straight plunger. It actually has a groove in it. So that's what would pull in. I'll zoom back out for you so you can see the rest of it. Let's pretend this is up top. This would zoom in and just clip just like that. I bet you they're the exact same solenoid. They just use them in two locations. So hence the reason why you have to push in, then it'll hold the solenoid in, and then you can pull your hasp out. So is it pickable? No. Uh, it is not pickable without destructive purpose. Uh, it's designed wonderfully. Even on the inside, it's epoxied too, which is definitely a softer epoxy coating than I am used to seeing on most products. It is rubberized. It is puncturable. Uh, this is just some type of gasket which goes over top just to hold things together there we go and there's our battery which we'll probably save for future projects but uh yeah and there's circuit board underneath not much you can do to it it is built for the weather it is built to be outside for years of use and it's not made to be opened easily so if you're selling your house and they got one of these on the front of your door Unless somebody's going to cut the doorknob off and steal that, go home, cut it apart to take your key out. Odds are there's going to be no doorknob left when they get back. So, so the guys at uh, Super or GE, whoever owns it now, it is an amazing product and it is impenetrable so far until somebody can hack the Bluetooth. And that's what I'm waiting for. I did read some articles on some TED Talks and some other guy had a thing uh, regarding the hacking of these Super Boxes. And uh, was it TED Talks? I could be wrong on that one. But... Uh, He's gotten so far to be able to connect to it, but he hasn't been able to decode anything yet. So, so far for now, they're safe. And the only thing going to get into this thing is if somebody figures out how the Bluetooth works. But uh, either way, sorry I couldn't uh, show you a sweet and easy way to get into this thing. But I guess that's a good thing, or else there'd be a lot of uh, homeowners out there worried when they sell their house. But uh, take care and support your local locksmith.